Okay, I'm gonna I'm making this video because I had a revelation last night and I saw the rider on the red horse of Revelation chapter 6, I think it's verse 2 or 3, the second seal. Now there's four chief angels of God, okay? There's four living creatures, and they're associated with the four chief angels, okay? One of the living creatures will say, Come see. Okay, Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And they summon the chief angels into the throne room of God. And then the chief angel will... So, for example, the rider on the wet red horse. One of the four living creatures says, First, Jesus pulls the seal. He receives the scroll from the Father or the one who is seated on the throne. The one seated on the throne is actually Jesus. And the Lamb of God is also Jesus, but the Lamb of God represents Jesus, His earthly body, and the sacrifice He made, and the life He lived in this world. And that's what makes Him worthy, because He was the pure, spotless Lamb of God. So the scroll comes from the Father into the, into the throne room of God, and then the Lamb of God pulls the seal. And the scroll has writing on both sides. And then one of the four living creatures will summon into the throne room of God the, whichever angel is assigned to that assignment. So, the four, so if you read Revelation chapter 4, 5, and 6, you'll see everything I'm talking about. Those who say the rider on the white horse, Revelation 6, 1, is the Antichrist, they're a false teaching. That's a false teaching. These are chief top angels of God and if you look at the book of Revelation John I think it's in Revelation chapter 19 John actually confuses one of the angels with the Lord and wants to bow down and worship him and the angel says don't do it don't do it I'm a fellow servant with you so a lot of people might confuse the rider on the white horse with the Lord even John the Apostle, after even having walked with Jesus, confused this angel with the Lord because they appear with mighty power and great glory. Read Revelation chapter 10. But a true angel of God, if you decide to worship or bow down to him, he's going to say, don't do it. Stop. I'm a fellow servant along with you. So, the way the government of heaven works is the scroll comes from the Father. The Lamb of God is the only one worthy to open the scroll and to look what's inside. He opens the scroll, and then one of the four living creatures says, Come see! In a voice like thunder, Kaboom! Come see! And that summons into the throne room of God a chief angel. Now, in the case of the rider on the white horse, Revelation 6.1, he comes into the throne room of God and receives a crown. In the throne room of God, that's not the Antichrist. But the vision I saw last night, I saw the rider on the red horse. Now, here's what I saw. I saw him at a distance, and he was riding far off. And um, he was going, like, this way. And I saw him just dun, 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 dun. and then he did this long loop and, and, and what I saw is he was carrying um, a flag. Now in the book of Revelation chapter 6, the rider on the red horse has a large sword. But I saw him carrying a, a flag and it was the American flag. But it was from, uh, it was the 13 star American flag. And this 13-star flag from back in the day when there was only 13 colonies, okay? And the flag was burning on fire. And there was a huge plume of black smoke coming off of this flag as he rode. And then he did this big arc and turned towards me. And, and then he started riding towards me. And as he got closer, I could hear the thump of the, uh, the thunder of his hood. And the hoof was sparking. There was fire under, it was a fiery horse. The horse was fiery. 
and his feet when it hit the ground as it was running would spark and he was running really fast and I didn't really see I didn't get a real good view of the actual rider on the horse although I could see it looked like a man and he was carrying a flagpole and at the end of the flagpole was a big flag and like I said it was burning on fire and then when he came riding towards me the thunder of the feet of the horse was like boom 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 I mean it was like and it was really intimidating to see this big giant beast of a horse now the angel is like 40 feet tall so the horse is even bigger I mean this was a big scare I mean I was like oh my god like and it ran past me I was like ah! okay and from the vision here's what I believe it means I believe that it has something to do with America burning right now with these riots and it's not a war against Black Lives Matter and white people it's not a race thing the true war is between the devil and the offspring of God and those who obey the Lord that's what this real war is all about and the reason I saw an old time flag with the 13 stars in a circle was because that represents the foundation of America and the Constitution and a time when America was godly and the, it was the flag was burning because that's what the attack is not on you and me it's a it's on the values of America and the Christian heritage of the United States of America that's what this war is that's what the Black Lives Matter movement is all about if you notice they're making the police bow just like the beast of revelation they're gonna make everyone bow to them they're making I saw a video of Nancy Pelosi and a bunch of politicians in in one of these big uh, rooms somewhere in Washington where they all got on a knee and bowed and um, there's a really good video of a police officer who, d who says I'm not gonna bow I only bow to one person I bow to the Lord I, b I bow to God and he's a police officer and they're trying to make everybody bow this is the beginning of the beast the go everybody who protests right now you are part of the government of the Antichrist and if you're a Christian or claim to be a Christian and you're deceived into into protesting or even slightly supporting this thing you are part of the government of the Antichrist that's forming right now the government of the Antichrist is Russia China North Korea Iran and Turkey and it's also all the people of the earth the inhabitants the Bible calls it the inhabitants of the earth all those whose name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life that includes the Christians who fall away from the faith and it includes the foolish virgins the lukewarm those who are vomited up okay that's all part of the government of the beast and if you're a Christian and you're out there protesting right now you're probably gonna fall away from the faith and take the mark of the beast at some time in the future if you're in Luke chapter 14 verse 33 Jesus said in the same way those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 33 34 35 talks about attaining to a greater resurrection and how some were some were tortured some were heckled and jeered some were in prison some were put to death for their faith in order to attain to a greater resurrection if you're sitting here thinking that you're going to be a part of a pre-tribulation rapture you're probably going to fall away from the faith and take the mark of the beast you're probably lukewarm you're probably already part of the government of the beast in your personal private life because you don't want to suffer for Jesus namesake you don't want to attain to a greater resurrection if you walk around saying Jesus paid it all I don't have to do nothing for God 
Oh, God's grace, I'm saved. Listen, there's a such thing as dead works. Dead works are when you try to do something for God that He never told you to do. But real death is when God did tell you to do something and you don't do it. That's also dead works. But life and godliness is when the Holy Spirit tells you to do something and you do it. And putting God's Word into practice like Jesus said about the wise and the foolish builders. He said the, the wise builder is the one who puts my words into practice. That's what the Lord said. And He builds over a lifetime, builds a house that will not fall. But those who know the Lord and never put God's Word into practice. What's it mean to put God's Word into practice? Whenever you see somebody that needs help, you help them. Whenever you see somebody who's homeless and you have a couple bucks, you give them a couple, you give them, you do what you can in every situation. You're out there sharing your faith and telling people about the Lord. You're obeying God. You can look at your life and say, I broke my alabaster bottle at the feet of Jesus. That means you gave an offering that hurt at some point and multiple times over your life. But the lukewarm people, when the Lord says, I want you to give this particular offering, and it's something they love, you know, give your, your, your brand new set of golf clubs. Oh, but Lord, I just bought these golf clubs and I'm going to the, I'm going to the golf course today. Or your surfboard. I'm not giving it. God would never ask me to give up surfing. Or your snowboard. For me, it's athletic stuff like that. Scuba gear and mountain bikes. That's the stuff that I, you know, I've given away motorcycles. I'm not si trying to boast or anything, but I've given away a CRF 450. <laughs> a KX 250 race bike. Offerings. I'm not saying this to boast. I'm just saying I've given cars away. Out of obedience to the Lord. I would never do it. Listen, I cannot boast. No man can boast. I, the Lord told me to give this car away. I didn't want to, but he told me to do it. And then he gave me, I prayed and asked God for help to obey him. And then he gave me scary dreams. And then when I woke up from the dream, I knew I got to give this car away. And I did it. I can't boast about that. It was God's grace and the power. See, people misunder the grace of God. God's grace is the power of God to obey him. And it's just God's grace that you even hear his voice and he tells you what to do in the first place. Some people think God's grace is some intangible thing where we just say, oh, God's grace, I'm saved. Like some sort of magic trick. No, you are in this life for God to, you are supposed to be on God's potter's wheel. You are supposed to be going through the process that God has for you. If you're marred in his hand, he's going to pound that marring out of you. The Bible talks about how any, any branch that produces fruit, He prunes it. Any branch that does not pr produce fruit, He cuts it off. The grapes are thrown into the wine press of God's wrath and the weeds among the wheat are thrown into the fire. You need to be about your Father's business and you need to be obeying God. It's the end of the age. And anybody who teaches that the rider on the white horse is the Antichrist, you have slandered one who dwells in heaven. Revelation chapter 13, verse 6. There is no need to be teaching false teaching in the end of the age. And those who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, it's because they don't want to suffer for the Lord. They don't want to have to obey God or do anything for the Lord. And since they've had a history, their history is a history of disobedience. Whenever God told them to do something they wanted to do, they went and said, Oh, yes, Lord, I hear and obey. Amen. Hallelujah. But whenever God told them to do something they don't want to do, they say, Oh, God's grace, I'm still saved. It's all, it's all by faith and not by works. No man can boast. Listen, you got to be about your father's business. It's the end of the age. It's the end of the age. You need to be laying down everything you own at the feet of Jesus. Because when the mark of the beast comes out, you're not going to want to be holding on to a bunch of stuff. Because it's that car that you keep holding on to or that expensive whatever it may be that's going to cause you to want to take the mark of the beast so you can keep it. Whoa. 
It's time. It's the end of the age. Now, it hasn't fully manifested yet, but it's going to. It's about to. So everybody get your heart right with God.